I get the impression they would go through thick and thin together. They simply belong together. I'm really envious of that. Hi, you two. Oh, hello. I've not had the pleasure of making your acquaintance yet. My name's Ivo. Welcome to Seastone. My name is Gulliver. This is my enchanting lotus blossom, Esther. Our son down there with the ogre is called Nate. Nate? Nate, yes. Named after a true hero and good friend. It was down to him that Esther and I got together back then in the Wildlands. About Nate, you haven't seen him recently, have you? Unfortunately not. We would have loved to have had him at our wedding, but he suddenly disappeared. I'm sure he's out there in the big wide world, helping other lovers find the happiness they deserve. But he left his love behind in the process. Do you... do you know him? That deceitful hypocrite who disappeared in the middle of the night with no explanation and leaving me standing there like an idiot of a pirate? No, I don't know him. Not anymore. It's not safe for you here in Seastone. Not for anyone. I know, but where else can we go? Zombies and the undead aren't really welcome anywhere. People think that we eat their brains. But to be honest, they really don't taste of anything. Ugh. Well, perhaps you'd be better off in the Wildlands. There are loads of monst... um... people like you there. Why do we have to go? Just because other people have a problem with us? That's not fair. Wilbur talked about the machine that you built together. Maybe you can bring it up here and build slates for yourself when everything's returned to normal. I don't think so. Only Bill knows where to get the intelligent stone. And he'd claim I've stolen his idea. He can afford ghouls, worse, lawyers. Anyway, where am I going to get the gold? Who would even lend me a copper piece? Don't give up, Sunshine. Small setbacks are a part of death. Esther's right. Those who fight may lose. But those who don't fight have lost already. Says the young, pretty and rich elf princess. I've got to go now. Bye, you two. Bye. Bye. I can't believe how the little rat boy got me out of jail. I think he must take after his uncle. Of course, statues will always be the first to lend their support when there's a revolution. I'm not sure who this statue's meant to be, but I'm certain that the council leader's people have defaced it. If I do my job right, then soon I'm going to be an enemy of the state. And looking at this regime, I'd regard that as an honour. A bucket with an evil-smelling, sticky, slimy substance. If I ever need anything like this, I'll know where to find it. Wow, I'm glad I'm out of there. Seastone's a dangerous place these days. But at least I can do something about it out here. Mmm, salt pretzels, donuts with icing sugar, together with hot mustard and a bit of pickled cabbage. Perfect.
When the cat's away, the mice will play. Let's go in. What the? You could have hit me. Yeah, whatever. No one's allowed to enter the school as long as the council leader's away. Council Leader Van Buren has asked me to get something from her office for her. She didn't tell me. She only told me to knock the head off anyone who tries to get in here while she's away. Oh, presumably she forgot to mention it. She'll be very angry if I don't bring her what she requested. Angry with you, not with me. Oh, somebody's really on the ball here. I'm really decisive. Well done. Yeah, no problem for a professional like me. Oh, I'll mention that in my report. What report? Oh, I'm not really permitted to tell you, but um, let's just say a positive evaluation should give your career a boost. But I'm exactly where I want to be. Really? Sure, otherwise I wouldn't be here. You really must have a ball every day harassing people. A smart guy like me can really make good in this world. But you're destined for greater things. Go out there and prove it. I could, but I don't want to. Let everyone else bumble around if they want to. They always come crawling back asking for help at some point. And I just say, deal with your own shit, you bumblers. Ha! <laughs> Oh, what a delightful conversation. Well, it's no surprise you liked it. Conversations with the one and only Grumda Klimpus are always a laugh. It was rather disappointing for me. But you did your best. I can't risk starting a fight with a troll. Yeah, I could get past him, but he might follow me and wake up half the town in the process. Annoyingly, I can't trick him either. He's just too stupid for that. Wanted for the murder of Archmage Alistair, the dirty, rotten, dangerous, armed and whiffy fiend, Wilbur Weathervane. The wanted man is armed and dangerous. Ha! Wilbur might be many things, but armed and dangerous? This is Nate. His name isn't his fault. I'll try to be nice to him. Hello, Nate. Are you interested in these toys, then? He says, finally, I know where all the rubbish comes from. You can understand him. It's quite obvious what he thinks of this junk. I think he says one could also build something useful out of all this. He's an inventor. two-headed ogre. Rather rare and pretty complicated, anatomically speaking. Good evening, gentlemen. Mademoiselle. <laughs> Fat elf! <laughs> My name is Ivo, and you are... Not Princess Ivo from the Woodland Realm. Yep, that's me. 
It's an honor, your highness. Although, considering the current situation, perhaps you shouldn't tell everyone who you are. I still don't know your name, kind sir. Oh, excuse me, your serene highness. Please, call me Ivo. My name is Zloth. That's my brother, Blout. Blout! Perhaps you could explain to me what's happened here. You're a mage, right, Zloth? Mage? Me? No. Why Zloth always say that? Zloth is mage. Not after what happened to the other mages in this town. What's happened? Oh, nothing. Nothing at all. But I've definitely given up magic, and therefore I am no longer a mage. Nice shop, but uh, a bit unusual. Candy floss, puppies, chocolate, baby dolls. It's dreadful. We had such a lovely inn. Subdued lighting, smoky air, and lots and lots of alcohol. And now... Lollies! You in! Lollies! A whole building has been transformed permanently. A little girl shouldn't have the power to do that. How does she do it? I, um, don't know what you mean. Are you expiring? You what? Blout should tell council leader if people expire. You're spying for the council leader? Blout's afraid the merchant council leader's daughter might turn him into a little girl with pigtails if he doesn't cooperate with her mother. We shouldn't give away that daughter does magic. You're expiring. No, Blout, we're not. Then that's okay. Zloth? Yes, Blout? What is expiring? <sighs> A friend of mine who's active in the uh, non-existent resistance has to somehow illuminate a big cave. I'm no longer a mage and have nothing to do with the resistance. And because I'm no longer a mage, I don't need my magical equipment anymore. Like, for example, this clicker, which can capture starlight. Good job that you aren't a mage anymore. Now I can give this thing to my friend, who's not on a wanted list and who's also not in the Resistance, which also doesn't even exist. Why talk so strange? Something not right here. You're much too suspicious, dear Blout. Thanks for the chat. You were like a beacon of light in the darkness of night, princess.
Right then, capture starlight. Hmm. That is beautiful. Yes? I've captured a bit of starlight for you. That should make your light problems a thing of the past. Really? Wow! I'm going to send the clicker down in the basket. You must wait until you're in the dark cave before you set the starlight free. Got it! There's a fully grown troll with an axe in the entrance hall of the school, and he won't let me into the staff room. Is there another way into the school? Um, if we had some fireplace travel powder, you could get into the staff room through the fireplace. Fireplace? I'm sure there isn't a fireplace in there. Presumably it's now a doll's house or something. Maybe the fireplace in the library's still okay. Worth a try. Just missing the powder now. It's on the headmaster's desk. Oh, which brings us back to the start of our problem. Yep, that's about the size of it. That's all for now. See you later. It's bright. I can see. By God, you got old. You're only statues. We are gods trapped in statues. That, by the way, is a very exciting story. Could someone help me up? Thank you. Hey, hey. All this light reminds me of a joke. Two trolls look up into the night sky. One asks the other, What do you think? Is there life on the moon? And the other replies, Well, of course! There's a light on, isn't there? <laughs> Maybe you could just lie him face down in the sand. So you're gods in statues. Did someone imprison you? And so it came to pass that the young hero encountered the epic story, which... The statues depict us. They are our last refuge. I always thought gods lived somewhere up in the sky in really stylish cloud palaces. I have lived in many temples, all of which were dedicated to me. The faithful met in them, discussing and answering the most difficult of questions. And they all paid homage to me, the god of riddles. <laughs> and then you were forgotten and ate sand for a few centuries. <laughs> that one calls himself Jerry, the god of bad jokes. Uh, the god of humor? That is Avini, goddess of the arts. And I... I am... Hypnis, the chatterbox. The god of good stories. One picture speaks more than a thousand words. Uh, 
Hello, said the young hero, and then asked the decisive question. I've always liked stories, especially the story of the knight Nii as he rode out to slay the evil dragon. Yes, one of my finest. You wrote the knight Nii story? I wrote all the stories, so to speak. Boy falls in love with girl, hooker with a heart, happy ending, all my inventions. Everything since is just variations on a theme, really. Wow. I also invented the words and, wide, and jam, as well as the letters E, Q, and L. Oh, and the Oxford comma. The last has, however, not been accepted by the majority. I still don't understand why you're here and not somewhere beautiful instead. I mean, you're gods. Can't you do whatever you want? Of course we can. Uh, well, theoretically. In reality, though, no one has believed in us for a long while. Do you know how gods are created, young man? I... I thought all of the gods had always been there. Nah. We get our power by people believing in us. It can be a great power. A power that can move mountains and flare up conflict. But if no one believes in you anymore, nothing remains. Our temples were destroyed centuries ago, or rededicated to other, more bloodthirsty gods. These four statues are all that remain. If they disappear, we, like our religion, will cease to exist. I have to go, he said, and went out into the world. A short while later, he said... What's up with this creepily decorated alcove? Is there a statue missing here? I wouldn't say missing. Where there is light, there is shade. Where there is good, there must also be evil. The Nameless One was probably the most powerful amongst us. Whenever anyone did anything evil, people believed that it was his fault. Oh, and because everyone believed in him? He became more and more powerful. It was simple for everyone. They could blame all their bad deeds on him. Where is he now? They banished him to the dungeon dimension. It's probably the greatest story of all time. That will be told another time. He was banished, and many small gods were put in his place. Murphy, the god of stupid coincidences. Monday, the god of bad moods. Alki, the god of drunkenness. Hundreds, thousands of little gods that people could blame when they did something bad or stupid. shrinking ring. That means he was here. Remy! This lake looks weird. The water is so dark and somehow oh, wrong. Oh, it's real water. That I could just swim to the island. Oh, <laughs> I wouldn't try that if I were you. And if I build a raft and get myself a small rowing boat? No boat can cross this lake, spoke the mighty voice of the highest of the gods. We can only explain to you how to get over the lake.
Hello, said the young hero, and then asked the decisive question. I think my friend Remy's on the island over there. How can I cross to it? Now, it's quite simple. No, it isn't. First, he's got to answer some riddles. Oh, we've already done with the light. Can't we simply get on with the story now? Previously, people honored us, gave us offerings, erected temples. I can't build you a temple. No, but you can honor us, so that we will bestow our favor upon you. Hmm. You are, um, awesome. How pitiful. You must give each of us an offering, or fulfill for each of us one wish. Or something like that. Yes, yes. And only when you've won over three of us will we reveal how you can cross the dark water safely. People, gods, whatever you are, this isn't a game. Remy may be in danger. When he is in the temple of the Nameless One, <laughs> for sure. Another reason for you to hurry. Chop, chop, mortal. Win our favor. You said that the temple on the island was for the Nameless One. That's right. Hundreds of years ago, the Nameless One grew ever more mighty, winning over an increasing amount of followers. Of course, the priests of the other gods were very unhappy about this, so they forbade the name of this god to be spoken, his symbols to be worn, or for prayers to be said to him. Those who were versed in the dark arts and wanted to use the god's power for their own purposes built this temple deep under the town. They performed forbidden rituals there and increased the might of the god. In return, he gave them untold power. That doesn't sound good. It wasn't. At some point or other, they were discovered and the temple destroyed. Shortly thereafter, the Nameless One was banished and for centuries, all was peaceful on the island. And then what happened to the temple? What happened next? A few years ago, men appeared. They visited the temple and held rituals there, rituals we had not witnessed for centuries. Dark mages who had delved too deeply into old books and found the whereabouts of the temple. They built a machine, the purpose of which we can only speculate over. Maybe they wanted to bring the Nameless One back to this world. If that was their aim, they didn't succeed. The island lapsed back into peaceful darkness. I suspect the mages had been killed. Ah! then my wand might have belonged to one of the Dark Mages. I don't know anything about magic wands. I just know that for several years the temple has been inhabited by a ghost which never leaves. And Remy's just gone there. That reminds me of an old story. Shortly before the first amphibians... Um, sorry, I just don't have time for long stories at the moment. Oh, of course. Just run along then, check out the neighborhood for stuff, and try to make sense of it all. What do you want me to do? Nothing. My vote would be to get the story moving again. We agree that he has to complete a task for each of us. But you don't know what happens on the island. It will be very exciting and very emotional. Oscar-worthy. What's happening on the island? Down here, riddles must be solved if you want to get any further. Just like in the good old days. <sighs> okay then. A task. <clears throat> Tell me a story. That's hardly a suitable task. Storytelling is not easy. It has to be a creative, exciting story that meets my exacting standards. Come on, gnome. Think up a story to knock us off our feet. Well, a boy whose horrible relatives make him live under the stairs.
Then he realizes he has superpowers after being bitten by a spider. Aha! Gripping storyline, exciting characters. The first act is complete. What are the further developments and climax going to be? Yes! Well then, next, his father dies. He becomes head of the family and takes bloody revenge. Later... He and Jenny see each other in the middle of the water. And then, the twist. Um, uh, uh, he, he, he himself was dead the whole time. Ah, very original. Why dead? You've got my support, my young friend. So, one got down, two to go.